Hi Matrix and welcome to part 2 of this finance video on growth and decay brought to you by the Answer Series. We've put together a summary here of the four growth and decay formulae we revised in part 1. Simple increase and compound increase and simple decrease and compound decrease. In this video we will look at which formula to use when. Also, up until now we have worked with examples where we were asked to find A. In these next couple of examples, we will also explore finding P, I, and N. There are three useful steps to follow when doing these examples. The first of the process will be to identify which formula to use. The next will be to identify which variables you have been given. And the last will be to identify what you have been asked to find. Let's start with this example about Sam who wants to have 50,000 Rand in 20 years' time. And we have been asked to determine the value of the deposit. If you would like to try it on your own first, please pause the video and give it a go. Looking at the question, what is important here is to see that the 50,000 is an amount in the future. In other words, the amount we've been asked to find is the amount that he needs to deposit now which means in each scenario, A and B, we've been asked to find P. Scenario A is if the interest rate is calculated at 8% per annum on a simple interest basis. And scenario B is if the interest rate is calculated at 8% per annum compounded annually. Finance questions can hold a lot of information, so it can be helpful to list your variables and select the applicable details. The words used are also really important in helping you identify which formula to use. The wording in A indicates that we are working with simple increase, and the wording in B indicates that we are working with compound increase. We've established that it is P we are looking for in both A and B. Now write down values for A, N, and I. All three of these will be the same for both A and B in this question. If you haven't yet given it a try on your own, then do so now before we go to the answer. So let's look at the calculations for this question. If you did give it a try, how did you do? Just a reminder when working with finance questions to make sure to have your calculator out and ready so that you can practice the calculating procedures. Okay, let's have a look at the answer for A. Remember what we needed to find was P and that A was our 50,000 Rand, the amount in the future, our N was 20 years, and I in both cases is 8%. Substitute in all the information given and solve for P by dividing 50,000 by the value from the bracket, which is 2,6. Then rounding off, the final answer is approximately 19 230 rand and 77 cents. Now for B, let's look at the compound increase option. Again, substitute in all the information. This time, when we calculate the bracket, we get an answer with a number of decimal places. You can see here that we use three dots to indicate that the number of decimal places continue. What is really important here is that you do not round off any calculations mid-process. So here you can choose to calculate the bracket and then on your calculator say 50,000 divided by the answer on the display of your calculator, which would be the value of the bracket, and then get the final answer. The alternative is you could type the full fraction on your calculator and press equals. Only once you have the final answer can you round off. This is a very important rule. Whichever method you choose, it is useful to check the display screen of your calculator as you go to make sure the information you've entered is correct. Let's pause for a moment and think. What should Sam do here if he had a choice? If you look at this answer compared to that answer, he would surely much prefer to deposit 10,000 and something rand to have 50,000 in 20 years' time rather than almost 20,000, which is double the 10,000. 
Finance questions can seem very wordy sometimes, especially the first time we read them. It can be helpful to expect this and then to plan always to read them through at least two or three times before assessing what you've been given, what you need to find and what formula you need to use. So if we look at worked example four, let's start by reading it through. Then on the second read, we can focus in on the detail. So the question reads, Calculate the number of years it will take for a piece of equipment currently costing 35,000 Rand to become worthless given that it depreciates at a rate of 15% per year on a straight line basis. Okay, so on the second read, we can see that we are asked to calculate the number of years it will take for a piece of equipment currently costing 35,000 Rand to become worthless given that it depreciates at a rate of 15% per year on a straight line basis. Take a moment now to think through which formula needs to be used, which variables you have been given and what you have been asked to calculate. Pause the video to give yourself a moment to do this. So how did you get on with this one? Did you recognize the terminology on a straight line basis, which indicates to use the simple decrease formula? Did you realize that if something is going to become worthless, that A's value, which is the value in the future, needs to be zero? And then that the 35,000 Rand is the present value of the equipment. And then lastly, that the 0.15 is the rate of depreciation and that it is n that we are needing to solve for. And now, substituting and calculating with care, we get an approximate answer for n of 6,67 years. And this tells us that in about 6 and 2 third years time, this equipment will become worthless. Here is another example which also happens to be about a piece of equipment. Again, we will read it through as a whole first, and then on the second read through, we can focus on the detail. Here is the first read. A piece of equipment depreciated on a reducing balance to be worth half of its original value over a period of five years. Calculate the annual depreciation rate. So on the second read through, we can see that this time the equipment depreciates on a reducing balance, that it is worth half of its original value, and it is over a period of five years. Then lastly, we need to calculate the annual depreciation rate. Take a moment now to look at which formula to use, which variables you have been given, and what you have been asked to calculate. And then pause the video to give yourself time to try this question on your own. Let's have a look at the answer. Did you recognize the terminology in this case on a reducing balance? indicating to use the compound decrease formula. Now let's look at the different variables. Did you find you were tempted to choose a random value for original and corresponding reduced value? This will work, but there is a more elegant option which also makes for far simpler calculations. As it is given in this example, the reduced amount is half the original amount, which means if we look at it in reverse, that the original amount will be double the reduced amount. In other words, if we suppose the reduced amount is x, then the original amount will be 2x. Our n is 5 years, and we need to solve for i. You are now ready to substitute your values and start your calculations. We can simply divide each side of the equation through by x, which leaves us with an equation where this power to the 5 equals a half. Remember we are solving for i and also make sure to remember not to round off mid-calculation at this point. Hopefully if you tried this example yourself you also got an answer for i of approximately 12,94% and if not that you now understand where you went wrong. For further practice on this work please have a look at the exercises in our grade 10 and Grade 11 Answer Series Maths 3-in-1 Study Guides.
Thank you for watching this video. We hope you now feel inspired to go and tackle some more examples to consolidate your learning and to continue to build your confidence in this section of mathematics. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.